with you what God has given to me. Now, I don't know what your background's like. I don't know what your situation has been. All I know is that you're right here in Skid Row. And so that you don't have to feel, you know, like a stranger, I want you to know that you're not alone, okay? I mean, look around, all right? <laughs> Seated right next to you is somebody else that can tell you that, oh yeah, I've experienced Skid Row. And by the way, I'll be one of the first pastors to say to you that guess what? In 2008, I experienced Skid Row too. All right? I sat in those same chairs right there, okay? I had to go to that building right there, Union Rescue Mission. I had to wait in line to get fed. I had to go up on the second floor, okay? Try to get me a, a bed. Hello, somebody. Let's keep it real. But how many of you know that the Word of God also says that he that the Son has set free is free indeed? Amen. Okay, let me tell you something. Even though I experienced that, I paid attention. I paid attention. I said to myself, I said, you know something? This don't make no sense. I need to stop running from God, and I need to start doing what God has not only called me to do, but what he created me to do. And I've got a little secret for you, all right? <laughs> Y'all ready? Y'all ready now? If you will do what God tells you to do, if you will just do what God tells you to do, Oh, but pastor, I, I don't, I can't hear God the way you do. Yes, you can. You got one of these? It's God's word. He speaks to you through this right here. Are you ready? Should we, should we go there? Should we, should we tell him? All right. And, and by the way, just in case you don't have one of those. Do you have one of these? Yeah. Huh? Show me if you got one. Okay. Guess what? God's word is in here too. I'm, I'm going to share with you the word of God that God gave it to me. It's found in the front page of this bulletin. And every Sunday that you come here, the message is in the bulletin. So don't just throw it away when you leave here. Keep it with you. Keep it. During the week when times get kind of hard, pull it out and read it. Okay? Matter of fact, watch this. Why don't you read with me now? Let's, let's read and see what today's message is. Okay? Today's message is found in 1 John chapter 5. We're going to read from verses 4 and 5. You ready? Let's get busy. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Hallelujah. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where's the birthday guy? Where is he? Where's Sam? Where'd he go? Sammy, where are you at? Oh, he must be gone someplace celebrating already. Yeah. Sammy! Get yourself over here, Sammy. Come on! Oh, yeah? Andre, Andre, Andre! Arriba, arriba, arriba. Arriba, arriba, arriba. Quick, make haste. Okay, everybody. Ready? We're going to sing happy birthday to Sam. Oh, All right? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sammy. Happy birthday to you. You know, somebody might say, man, come on, all that's not necessary. It is necessary. Because it's my way of letting you know that we appreciate you. We appreciate the fact that, guess what? I come here only two times a month. My understanding, you come here every Sunday. Now, that's a sacrifice, don't you think? Now, now, now let me ask you this. Did, did anybody twist you around? No, sir. 
You just come, huh? There it is. Give him a hug, man. God bless you. All right. Let's give him a hand while he go on back to, to, to work. <laughs> okay. All right. We're gonna read. We're gonna read um, the scripture that's here. It says, "For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith." Who is he who overcomes the world? Jesus. But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Today's message is titled "Victory Over." the world Amen. let's uh, let's pray father and in, this is really an exciting time we want to thank you and praise you that here we are in the midst of all this heat that people would still recognize the need to still come out and I thank you father and I praise you that you would entrust me to deliver your message to deliver your word that even right now, I personally want to submit to you that what comes out of my mouth is not coming out of my head, but it comes from my heart, comes from my spirit, given to me by your Holy Spirit, and that the same anointing that you have given to me, let this same anointing rest upon each one of their hearts, that they will receive your word, that not only do they receive your word, that they would do your word. And they will become your word. Because your word says in John chapter 1 verse 14, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So therefore we know that the word can become exactly what it was released to do. So Lord, we thank you, we praise you now, we honor you now, that even as you begin to, sh to send a cool breeze in this place, that you begin to show us your glory, that you begin to, 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 to just breathe a fresh, a fresh air upon us, Lord. I thank you and I bless you now, in Jesus' name, amen. It doesn't matter if you've got a Bible with you, which we consider to be the sword of the Spirit. Word of God says that this is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Or it doesn't matter if you have your bulletin, because as I mentioned before, this bulletin has today's message in it. So therefore it becomes your switchblade. Yeah. In times like this, you better have something. Because how many of you know that you're in a battle? In this battle, you better be armed. Okay? Because if you're not armed, the enemy is going to talk you big time. Do I have any witnesses here? All right, so here, here we go. Let's get busy. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. I think that we can begin with that very word, victory. Especially here in the United States of America. We're always celebrating the victories, aren't we? We like to win, don't we? of you know that the Bible says thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph over our enemies. How many of you know that? How many of you know that God has already given you the victory? And that your victory is in Christ. So the first thing I want you to understand that before you even enter into the battle before you even enter into the race, 
I want you to know that this battle is already predetermined. And guess what? You win. All God is saying is, will you be willing to trust me? Are you willing to trust me and take me at my word? Are you willing to participate? Am I right, Brian? Are you willing to participate? I see a lot of people sitting back there. I got all these empty seats up here. But I already know, I already know it's, it's shade back there. I know that. So it's okay, I excuse you this time. <laughs> but if you really knew what was up front, you would come running up here. You see? And what is up here? Opportunity. <laughs> Opportunity. Pastor's like, what are you talking about? Pastor, we know that you love God. We know that you're a man of God. But really, what are you talking about? For whatever is born of God. For whatever is born of God says overcomes the world. I didn't make it up. That's the word. Are you born of God? I'm asking you a question. Are you born of God? That he already is telling you that you have overcome the world. Y'all don't hear me. Let, me. let me help you with this. And this is the victory, okay? Now, first of all, the word victory, when I looked up the word victory in the Greek, the word is Nike. And by the way, when I'm looking it up, you know how Nike is spelled? Anybody know? Where's my Bible scholars? Nike. Nike. Can you imagine that? I'm looking it up and I'm like, what? Nike? But then it, it broke it down, and, and it, it, the pronunciation is not Nike, it's Nike. Okay? And guess what? It means to conquer. Oh, Jesus. To conquer, baby! To conquer! What does that mean to those of us that are down here in Skid Row? Because the last time I checked, Skid Row is like. You don't go no lower than this. The next, the next, the next um, exit from here is under, hello somebody. So the bottom line is, God is saying, I'm giving you, I'm offering you an opportunity to conquer your enemy. And you're like, well, Lord, Yes, I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of suffering. How can I conquer my enemy? <laughs> oh, Jesus, I love you. By receiving my son, Christ Jesus. Now somebody's like, well, Pastor, come on. Isn't that elementary? We know about that stuff. We've already received Jesus. Oh, you have? Have you really received Jesus? Man, I wish I could just walk up and down these aisles right here. But I know I don't have enough cord here. Because I need you to understand something here. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but I came that you might have life, and life more abundantly. I didn't say this. Jesus did. Yeah. And he tells me, George, son, I want you to come over here and remind them what I said. Amen. Now, let's understand something here. I'm not, I'm not trying to down anybody. I'm not trying to make you feel insignificant. I'm not trying to make you feel inferior or anything like that. Let me tell you what, what God is doing. God, is, God only wants you 
to become, oh Jesus, here it is. <laughs> Jesus, he only wants you to be enlightened. That's all. Your body, your mind. Do you know that in Genesis, in Genesis, the first thing that God did, what did he do? The first thing he did. He said, let there be light. And by the way, he was not talking about the sun, the moon, stars. He was talking about illumination. Jesus help me. If I can just get your spirit reignited, if I can just get you spiritually reattached to your father, if we can, if we can replug you into his system and unplug you from the system of this world, you would become a mighty victor in Christ Jesus. I don't think of any better place to share this message than right here. And I'll tell you why. Because this is the place where society has, excuse me, I'm just keeping it real. They just kicked you to the curb, baby. The out curb, the outcast, the downtrodden, the lost, the forgotten. When I came here in 2008, I came here all alone. I got eight sisters and brothers. Thank you, Lord. My parents got an empty two-family home back east. What am I doing coming here in Skid Row? It didn't make no sense. Thank you, Lord. Well, the truth of the matter is this. I became unplugged. Yeah, let's keep it real. I became unplugged. And let me tell you what, what, what I mean when I say unplugged. When you disobey God, when you disobey God, you stop the flow. Jesus, help me. Wait a minute now. Yeah. I told you I'm not the author and the finisher of the word of God. I'm not him. Jesus is. Amen. Amen. And if you go to Genesis, you'll see what happened to Adam. Everything was going great. Adam had dominion. One bad decision. One bad choice. Pull the plug on his life. And guess what? <laughs> look, 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 look at the results of his mistake. We got all kinds of addiction going on here. We got all kinds of chaos. We got, oh my God. It's, it's crazy up in here. You know what I'm saying? But don't forget, Jesus came and said, I came that you may have life and life more abundantly. First of all, let's make it so clear so that you will no longer have an excuse. Okay? Because let me speak to you in modern terms. Jesus came to plug you back. Plug you back into his system. Oh, by the way, what system are we talking about? <laughs> when Jesus came, he came preaching of, of what did he preach on? The kingdom of God is at hand. That is the system that he's speaking of. That is the system that I represent. And every man and woman of God that comes up here and shares the word of God, they are all inviting you to participate in this great system. Okay, let's go down to verse 
remember, I know you all don't have this on, on your on your uh, page, so those of you that have your Bible, you benefit. I'm going to continue in, in chapter 5. I'm going to go down to verse number 10, and I'm going to read a couple of verses. It says, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. Amen. And this is the, is the testimony. Oh, y'all don't hear me now. Hallelujah. If you haven't heard anything else, hear this. Because this is going to be life changing. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. I can sit down now. I can sit down. Do you realize the fact that you have eternal life? Do you realize what that means? Girl, girl, do you understand what that means? Hallelujah. Do you understand what that means? You have eternal life. Do you understand? Comprende? Habla español un poquito también. Ok, muy bien. You Hawaiian? Oh, excuse me, man. Aloha. Muy bien, muy bien. Ok. In, his, in this life, it's in his son. Did you hear that? Amen. I'm going to read it again. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Let me tell you what I had to do. I had to start all over again. Okay? In 2008, by the way, 2008 is when, if not when, I received Christ. I received Christ a long time ago. But I made some choices. I made choices that caused me to become disconnected uh -huh. for his plan and purpose for my life. All right, all right. Okay? But when I became aware of the fact that I was disconnected, I did everything within my power. You better hear me now. I did everything within my power to see to it that I became plugged in again. And this is what God is saying. Your victory is in Christ. I'm going to say it again. Your victory is in Christ. Okay? Your victory is in is not your nationality. Your victory is not in your education. Your victory is not in how much money is in your bank account. Your victory has nothing to do with who is politically in office. Oh, y'all won't hear me. Your victory has nothing to do with how many people agree with you. Because your, agree, your victory is only in one person, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the true father, except through me. So we're trying everything else. We got programs. They're offering us programs all over the place. God destroyed the biggest program that existed. You know what that program was? <laughs> When Jesus, when, when Jesus died on that cross, the Bible tells us that the veil was torn. What are you talking about, Pastor? The veil, that religious, the religiosity, that religious confusion that you've been all a part of. Jesus came to set the record straight. Oh, I know right about now I'm stepping some, on some toes. 
But I need you to know I'm not here to preach any religion to any of you. Because if I am, I need to drop this mic and get up out of here as quick as I can. Because I am here under assignment to speak for one person and one person only, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Master, and our soon coming King. He's the one who gives you victory. Now, am I telling you that you have to like separate yourself from your church? I didn't say that. I did not say that. I'm not telling you to all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, Pastor Joy said to stop going to church. I didn't say that. I told you, oh Jesus, help me now. I told you to make sure that you are connected to Jesus Christ. That's what I told you. If there's anything else that I can, can help you with, the most important thing in life is this. I'm not going to paraphrase it. We'll read it again. Verse 10 says, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Now here's, here's verse number 12. He who has the Son woo, has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Why is it so important that God would want you to hear this once again? Because we're in the last days, by the way. Okay? And, and, the, and the Bible tells us that in the last days, many people are going to fall by the wayside. They're going to give up their faith. They're going to give up their trust in God. But God wants every one of you to know that if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, if you know that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, oh, you don't hear me now. I'm not talking about the fact that, well, I grew up in church. You growing up in church don't mean that you have Christ. Oh, well, Pastor, I was, I was dedicated to the Lord when I was a baby. That doesn't mean that you have Christ. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm getting in trouble now. Don't stone me. My, my grandmother and my grandfather, they prayed for me. That doesn't mean that you have Christ. But Pastor, you don't understand. I come from a family of, 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 of priests. I come I'm from a family of pastors. Matter of fact, I got a bishop in my family. That does not mean that you have Christ. You have to have your own encounter with him. You have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to deny everything else and come to him and realize that, guess what? I'm a sinner and I have need of you because you're the only one that has the power to forgive me of my sins. Who am I preaching to this day? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm not preaching no name and claim it message today. Duh. This message is about life. Okay? You want, you want your life back? God is telling you how to get your life back. You fighting addictions? God's telling you how to overcome your addictions. We're up there looking for supernatural power from God. And God is... Here's a 
supernatural power right here, my word. My word. My word in Isaiah 55, 11 says, my word shall not return to me void. But it will accomplish what I sent it to do. We have to look at the supernatural. <coughs> Let's try this. How about eternal life? You don't get no better than that, baby. You don't get no better than that. I'm about ready to close it down. But before I do, let's 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 go over a couple of other uh, scriptures here. Okay. Let's go to John 8:12. Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Remember, remember I mentioned light before? Remember I mentioned about in Genesis, the first thing that God said, let there be light and there was light, illumination. Illumination. Let's try, let's try truth. Let's try faith. How's that? Your first experience with faith was through his son, Christ Jesus. And by the way, the moment you received Jesus Christ, <coughs> you became a man or a woman of faith. Because the Bible says that it is by faith that we are saved. It is the gift of God unto eternal life. Oh, Jesus, help me. Please, how much faith does it take to receive Christ? Hello, somebody. So what he's saying is, all you need is a little grain of his word. I can get the job done. There it is. There it is. There it is. I think one of the I think one of the shortest verses in the Bible is Jesus wept. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Do you know that's enough? That's enough for 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 faith to enter into your heart. Jesus, I'm gonna give you all one more. I'm gonna give you one more. Let's go to John 9, 5. As long as I am in the world. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But I thought Jesus left. I thought Jesus ascended back into the heavens. I thought Jesus was seated at the, on the right hand of the Father. What do you mean? As long as he's in the world. Do I get any Bible scholars out there? Help me out. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always till the end of time. He also told his disciples, I will send to you another comforter. Acts, Acts chapter 2 says that, Oh, Jesus. On the day of Pentecost, <laughs> on the day of Pentecost, they were up in the upper room. And the Bible says, suddenly, suddenly, a great wind entered the room. And everybody that was in there was filled with the Spirit. So I need you to understand something here. What? I got you, I got you. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I, I said, Lord, send that breeze, send that breeze. Look, look, look around you, look, look, look. The wind is blowing. Okay? Can you see the wind? Somebody help me, can you see the wind? No, you can't. You cannot see the wind. You only see the effects of the wind. I think he showed up just in time. Because I need you to understand that guess what? The 
Bible says that we shall see God. But wait a minute, what do you mean? How are you going to see God? You see the effects of God. You see the transformation power of God. You see the healing power of God. You see the life changing power of God. Who said that? Who said it? Come on, come on, man up. Who said it? Say it again. There it is. If you see me, you see the Father. If you see the Father, you see me. Why? Because I and the Father are one. Let's close it down, y'all. Let's close it down. Let's close it down. Let's close it down. Now. Let's close it down. Because the title of this message is Victory Over the World. My praise and worship team, y'all might as well come home.